ओम सदा शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा इन एवरी युग ईश्वर मैनिफेस्ट हिमसेल्फ इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ गुरु टू कन्वे द टीचिंग ऑफ द वेदास टू ह्यूमैनिटी सो दैट humanity is able to emancipate itself from the never ending cycle of births and deaths that is known as samsara in the satya yuga ishvara manifested himself as dakshina murti the adi guru who in his silence conveyed the reality of advaita tatva and his disciples had the intellectual and mental maturity to realize the truth merely by that silence as that yuga passed and made way to the treta yuga ishvara again manifested himself as dattatreya and in a sutra form conveyed the very same reality sutras are very brief terse sentences and so what was conveyed through silence in the satya yuga was conveyed as sutras in the treta yuga in the dwapara yuga ishvara manifested himself again as veda vyasa and by composing itihasas like the mahabharata the puranas and the bhagavatam ishvara conveyed the same advaita reality however it was no longer in silence it was no longer in sutra form but in easily digestible morals that were embedded within the core of the story of the itihasas and the puranas of the 100000 or so verses in the mahabharata for example nearly 24000 are dealing purely with siddhanta with philosophy and thus as the intellectual maturity of spiritual aspirants declined from the satya yuga to the treta yuga to the dwapara yuga the effort that ishvara had to expend increased and consequently when the situation changed for the was again in kali yuga ishvara manifested once again in the form of adi shankara bhagavat pada the effort that he had to undergo to convey the reality of that upanishad tatva the shruti shiro bhaga the crest of the shrutis was simply phenomenal in the very limited time span of 32 years acharya shankara bhagavat pada achieved something which is beyond the scope of any mere mortal as the madhavi shankara vijayam which is the most popular and commonly accepted account of adi shankara's life says agyanantar gahana patitan atma vidyopadeshaihi tratum lokan bhavadav shikha tap papachyamanan muktva maunam vata vitapino mulato rishpatanti shambho murtih charati bhuvane shankaracharya roopa what this verse is saying is that lord shiva himself is traveling in this world in this age as shankaracharya and shankaracharya is none other than dakshinamurti who has renounced his banyan tree renounced his silence and is now traveling the world to teach the knowledge of the self so that the world which is engulfed in the dark forests of ignorance and which is burning from the forest fires of worldly bondage is rescued thus it is ishvara who appears in every yuga for the upliftment of humanity and to show humanity the path to ultimate liberation through the knowledge of the self so adi shankara acharya was not the founder of advaita by any means he was an extraordinarily illustrious personality in a timeless hori tradition of advaita vedanta sampradaya or tradition of advaita vedanta which has 
asset spaces, the Upanishads themselves. Even in the Upanishads themselves, the teacher of the Kena Upanishad doesn't say, this is what I have discovered. He simply says, Iti shushruma purvesha ye nastad vyata chakshire. Thus, what I am teaching you, my student, is what I have heard previously. Thus, the timeless Upanishads themselves do not profess to be the founders of Advaita Vedanta. It emerges from the divine itself and is the timeless reality that is present everywhere and for all time. Coming to Adi Shankaracharya, according to most accounts, he was born in the 8th century of the common era in a village called Kalati in what is now known as Kerala to the pious couple Aryamba and Shivaguru. At the age of 5, he received the Upanayana Samskara and very quickly mastered the four Vedas. He felt the call for sannyasa or renunciation early on in his life and at the age of 8 decided to take it up. Adi Shankaracharya then left Kalati in search of a guru and found his guru on the banks of the Narmada in the form of Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada who was himself the disciple of Acharya Gaudapada Acharya. Gaudapada Acharya was the author of the famous Karikas to the Mandukya Upanishad, the Mandukya Karikas, which were essentially a highly profound commentary on the Mandukya Upanishad composed in the form of verses. When Sri Shankaracharya approached his guru, he realized that Sri Govinda Bhagavad Pada was deeply immersed in Samadhi. Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada, despite being in Samadhi, realized that there was a great visitor in front of him, rose up from his Samadhi and asked Shankaracharya the question, Who are you? And in response, Shankaracharya replied in 10 verses, which are, which are now known as the Dasha Shloki. Each verse in the Dasha Shloki is highly pregnant with Advaitic meaning and ends with the common refrain Tadeko Vashishta Shivah Ke Valoham. The first verse, for example, goes Nabhumir Natoyam Natejo Navayuhu Nakham Nendriyam Va Natesham Samuhaha Anekantikatvat Sushuptyeka Siddhaha Tadeko Vashishta Shivah Ke Valoham. I am neither earth nor water nor fire nor air nor space nor am I the senses or their aggregate. All these are indeterminate, uncertain, whereas I am the one entity that is proven through the experience of deep sleep. I am the one that remains after all of this has been negated. I am Shiva, the auspicious, the only one. That am I. On hearing these words, the Madhaviya Shankara Vijayam says, Govinda Bhagavad Pada Acharya said, Shankara, sa Shankara Eva Sakshat. He is Shankara, Lord Shiva, verily, who was descended onto this earth in a human form. Having uttered these words, Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada stretched his feet outside the cave where he was meditating, and Shankara Acharya paid his respects and worshipped the Guru by performing Pada Puja to his feet. This incident is recollected to this day in the Shishashtvikara ceremony, the ceremony where the senior pontiff of the Sringeri Sharada Peetham, when he takes up his disciple, he essentially shows him his feet and the disciple worships that feet and that is a reminder to the original incident that happened between Govinda Bhagavad Pada and Sri Shankara Bhagavad Pada. Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada imparted to Shankara the various Mahavakyas and the knowledge of Brahman and instructed him to write bhashyas or commentaries on the Vedanta Sutras, the Brahma Sutras of Bhagavan Vedavyasa, which were the essence of Vedanta philosophy. And until Shankaracharya 
had come into the scene, there was a great confusion as to what the true import, the true meaning of those enigmatic sutras were. Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada asked Acharya Shankara Bhagavad Pada to go to Varanasi. Varanasi was the seat of learning in ancient India, where all the learned men of India converged and debated with each other the intricacies of various philosophical systems. So Shankaracharya reached Varanasi and commenced writing a commentary on the Brahma Sutras. And in Varanasi was the famous incident with the Chandala, where Adi Shankaracharya, who by that time had accrued various disciples who were interested in learning more about Advaita and Advaita Vedanta, and upon encountering the Chandala who was walking with his four dogs in the path of Adi Shankaracharya, his disciples asked the Chandala to give way so that the sannyasi could pass through. And the Chandala replied, Annamayat Annamayam Athava Chaitanya Meva Chaitanyat Dvijavara Duri Kartum Vanchasi Kim Bruhi Gacha Gacheti. He is saying, O oh, Dvijavara, best among the Brahmana sannyasis, you are saying that something should move away from something your your order to me was to was gacha gacha move out of the way is what you said but what is it that you're asking to move out are you saying that this physical body the annamaya kosha are you asking one annamaya kosha to move away from another annamaya kosha if that is the case the annamaya kosha of a brahmana and the annamaya kosha of the chandala are composed of the very same five elements. Essentially, the same gross matter exists in both physical bodies. So, what will move from what? Essentially, it is the same five elements. Or alternatively, if you are talking about the consciousness, then the consciousness that is imminent in this body here is the same as the consciousness that is imminent in that body there. So how can the one all-pervading consciousness move and where will it move? Now when Shankaracharya heard this statement from the mouth of a Chandala, he was awestruck at the Atma Jnana, at the direct experiential Atma Jnana that was present in the Chandala and on the spot he composed a set of five verses which are called the Manisha Panchakam. One such verse in the Manisha Panchakam is as follows Brahmai Vahamidam Jagatta Sakalam Chinmatra Vistaritam Sarvam Chaita Davidyaya Trigunaya Shesham Maya Kalpitam Itham Yasya Drida Matihi Sukhatare Nitye Pare Nirmale Chandalostu Satu Dvijostu Guru Rityesha Manisha Mama. Acharya is saying here. I am Brahman verily and this world that appears in front of me is merely a manifestation within consciousness which occurs due to ignorance which is composed of the three primordial gunas Sattva, Tamas and Rajas. The individual who has a firm conviction in this knowledge and abides in the pure eternal self, which is of the nature of ultimate bliss, be he a Brahmana or a Chandala, he is certainly my Guru. This is my firm conviction. Profoundly moved by this experience, Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada started his commentary on the Brahma Sutra. It is staggering to think that Acharya was only 12 years of age at that time. But when you look at the profound depths in the Brahma Sutra Bhashyam, one is convinced that what we have in front of us is Ishwara himself. That 12-year-old boy starts off one of the most brilliant introductory passages of any commentary ever written called the Adhyasa Bhashyam. In that one seminal introductory piece, the Adhyasa Bhashyam, Shankaracharya diagnoses the cause of samsara and identifies avidya, ignorance, and adhyasa, superimposition based on that ignorance, as the fundamental root cause of samsara. 
It is because of ignorance that one imagines multiplicity where there is only unity. It is out of ignorance that one takes the body, the senses, the mind as oneself. It is out of ignorance that the world is divided into mine and not mine. It is out of ignorance of who one truly is that every single transactional activity that takes place happens. And therefore it is ignorance and its consequence mistaken identity which is the fundamental root cause of samsara. And if ignorance is the problem, the solution is knowledge or jnana. And to convey that knowledge or jnana and to remedy the evil as a consequence of that knowledge, the entire Upanishadic corpus begins. As Adi Shankaracharya says in the conclusion to the Adhyasa Bhashya, Asyanartha heto of Prahanaya, Atnaikatta Vidya Patipattage, Sarve Vedanta Arabhyante. With these concluding remarks, Adi Shankara Bhagavat Pada commences his commentary on the 555 sutras that comprise Bhagavan Vedavyasa's Brahma Sutra, which were organized into four chapters Samanvaya, Consensus, Avirodha, Non Contradiction, Sadhana, Means, and Phala, Result. And through the Brahma Sutra Bhashyam, Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada establishes that the fundamental import of the Upanishads is that Brahman is the sole reality, the world is merely an appearance, and that Jiva and Brahman are fundamentally identical. Brahma Satyam, Jagan Mithya, Jivo Brahmaiva Naparaha. He then proceeded to write commentaries on the other two fundamental texts of the Vedanta canon, the Prasthana Trayam, the Upanishads, which is the Shruti Prasthanam, and the Bhagavad Gita or the Smriti Prasthanam. Apart from the commentaries to the Prasthana Trayam, Acharya Shankara Bhagavad Pada also wrote several independent works or Prakarana Granthas, such as the Upadesha Sahastri, the Viveka Chudavani, etc., which were aimed at those people who could not access the truly profound depths to be found in the Prasthanatraya Bhashyas. Thus, Acharya Shankara Bhagavat Pada catered to all manner of seekers with varying intellectual and mental faculties. But it wasn't purely philosophy either. He did not merely stop with composing these Bhashyas and the Prakrana Granthas. He travelled all four corners of the country to establish the supremacy of Advaita Vedanta and challenged various systems of philosophies in philosophical debates all around the country. Thus, he was able to establish Advaita Vedanta as the apex philosophical system once and for all. He did not stop merely with philosophical contemplation, writing the Prasthanatraya Bhashyas, the Prakrana Granthas, and establishing by logical reasoning and debates the supremacy of Advaita Vedanta. He went much beyond that. Recognizing that to even enter the realm of philosophy, one needs to have a certain degree of mental maturity and purity, he composed various devotional works on multiple deities. The Saundarya Lahari, for example, was a hymn that was dedicated to the Jaganmata Parvati Devi. Similarly, he composed various devotional works on Mahavishnu, Shiva, Ganesha, Kartikeya, and he essentially covered the entire pantheon of Hindu religious beliefs as well. Thus, the charge that is often leveled at Advaita Vedanta, that there is no scope for devotional love in this philosophical system, is an unfounded one because one of the leading lights of Advaita Vedanta, Adi Shankaracharya himself, has composed so many devotional hymns 
directed to various deities. And the reason why he did that was recognizing that the path to Advaita is a long one and it requires a great deal of mental maturity and spiritual progress. And to attain that spiritual progress and to cater to the different Upasya Devatas, the different personal favorite forms of Ishvara that different people may have, Shankaracharya composed a variety of devotional hymns directed at a variety of deities. He did not stop there. Recognizing that Sanatana Dharma and the Advaita system needs to be preserved even after his time, he established four Amnaya Pithas or monasteries in each of the four corners of the country. Shringeri in the south, Dwaraka in the west, Jyotirmat in the north and Puri in the east. Thus, in one life of 32 years, Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada was able to achieve what thousands of people take thousands of lives to achieve. He was not only a philosopher, he was the foremost debater of his day. Not only was he a philosopher logician, he also composed several devotional hymns to cater to the devotional mindset of devotees not yet ready to enter Advaita Vedanta and philosophical inquiry. But he did not merely stop there. He also created an organizational system that would propagate Advaita Vedanta and Dharma and which continues to do that 1200 years after he has left this earth. On this auspicious occasion of Adi Shankara Jayanti, we must pay our respects to this great avatara of Ishvara. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hyom Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti